So let's talk about Vestas, you know, and there's a lot of red flags and some really negative warning signs right now. You know, Vestas has lowered its earnings outlook and it's expecting its EBITDA to be around 4%, which is down from 5 to 7% and about half of what they were expecting uh, in 2020. So, uh, Alan, is, is Vestas, are they in trouble here? They definitely are in a financial cash flow pinch. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And the stock price will, will point to that. Uh, they've had some shakeups in, in the CFO position recently. Uh, and from just listening to the industry and different viewpoints of the industry, uh, a lot of people will tell you that Vestas is really struggling on cash flow. And it's not so much what the value of your stock is. It's what's happening cash flow day to day. Can you pay your bills? Because most companies fail on cash flow. Not to say Vestas is going to fail, but that's where you're going to focus your most of your attention at right now is cash flow. And I think what's happening now is that Vestas is really going to tighten the belt on where the cash outlays are and to limit them or to push them off as, as far as they can. They're probably going to limit hiring. They're probably not going to expand into new research areas. They're probably going to close down research projects. They're probably going to you know, basically stay where they're at right now technology-wise for the next year or two and try to make some sales that like Grossmayer is talking about in offshore where there may be a little more value there to increase their profit margins because if they don't and they continue on the same trajectory, it could be really catastrophic. So I, I, I we're watching sort of uh, upper management investors really grab hold of the ship and start to steer it day to day. That's smart business. Because if you didn't see that, you'd be even more concerned about it. And Rosemary, you were concerned when you heard some of their higher ups talking about, hey, maybe we can slow down. You know, we'd like to see growth of the size of some of these wind, wind turbines slow down. I mean, you took that as kind of a bad omen. Yeah, well, it's not that I thought that it was an unusual thing to say. I just thought it was an unusual thing for uh, someone in senior leadership to be saying that they're, you, you know, they're a participant in this design trend for larger and larger turbines. They've got what the, the biggest or at least one of the very biggest um, turbines announced. And then to say, you know, this is a bad idea that turbines are continuing to grow so fast. I just thought that that just really sounded like a there's some – at the top, there's some disagreement about what their strategy should be. So in that sense, I wasn't surprised to hear that, you know, things aren't going as as well for them right now. But, I mean, I will be so, so sad if I, if we see Vestas fold. Um, I mean, I don't think that that's imminent, but even I'm going to be really disappointed if we do start to see some of their research programs sh shutting down, and I'm sure that it will happen. I mean, you know, having been working in companies that have been through these same sorts of things, that's that's what you do when um, your cash flow is squeezed. You you stop activities that aren't going to make money for a lot of years. But that's one of the things that I have appreciated about Vestas um, is some of their like real forward thinking far ahead research. Like just recently I um, talked about their multi-rotor design that they um, they trialed a couple of years ago, I think 2016 to 2018, never thinking this was going to be a product that they would be making money off in the next few years. But, you know, they're, they're learning a lot about the the future direction, the future boundaries so that, you know, when um, when we get to the point that we can't just make a bigger turbine. They already know how to quickly move to the the next thing. And I, I thought that that kind of forward thinking is, is really good and it will be such a shame if they have to, you know, scrap whatever secret research projects they've got on at the moment. <laughs> you know, that's not going to be good for them in 10 years' time, but that's the reality of, yeah, of staying in business. Yeah, you're right. It, it's a shame to see a company that's so interested in research and, and pushing the boundaries of, of what, you know, any industry could be. Uh, to have to contract and sort of get into that sort of, you know, self-preservation mode. One thing that Vestas is doing, which is very smart, uh, I think there may be a little bit of a plateau, natural plateau right now in terms of the growth of wind turbines because it's been growing so rapidly. They need to take a deep breath and make sure that what they're building is is as is, is quality as they think that it is. But you need to preserve jobs here in terms of the e economics of Denmark and all the countries that – Vestas is invested in losing jobs right now is a huge sink to the economies. 
And it, it, if you're going to preserve cash, you're going to preserve cash for a reason. One, to maintain the company, but two, you're hopefully going to maintain those jobs. And I think in the trade-off of R&D right now versus jobs, I hope they decide for jobs because I think longer term, you want to keep those core people in your organization. Yeah, I agree. And if um, they lose the the people, then they lose a lot of the benefit from their previous research anyway, because you can't put everything down mm, in a report. Yeah. You know, some of it needs to stay in the company culture and, you know, with enough people around in the canteen to, to chat about a new project and like, oh, that sounds like something I did a while ago. You know, you can't just start fresh every time that you go through a, you know, a new economic cycle. Yeah, that's a good point. You can't distill everything you've learned through research and many years on the job into, like you said, a report. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a great point. Yeah, and you can't underestimate the um, importance of the Danish canteen. I, mean, I, I always say, people say, you know, what did you... What did you like most about working in Denmark? Number one is the canteen. <laughs> and it's uh, not just because someone made me food every day and I didn't have to pay much for it. It's it's because of, you know, like the just the, the chatting opportunities that you really get so far when you're, you know, in that idea generating phase of a, a project or you've got a problem you need to solve. That's You do that by informal chats in the, the canteen. So, yeah, I <laughs> definitely appreciated that part of, of working in Denmark. 